During the American Civil War, the Confederate armies experienced widespread Christian revivals where soldiers found inner peace in the midst of war and the hope of everlasting life while facing the reality of death. An estimated 150,000 Confederate soldiers were converted during the war. In addition to the devout Christians of Lee and Jackson, and other officers who were already bishops and preachers, such as Leonidas Polk and Lee's chief of artillery, William Pendleton, there were other high-level officers who were converted during the war, such as Hood, Johnson, Bragg, Ewell, and even Jefferson Davis. There were a large number of Northern soldiers who were converted too, but they didn't have the same large-scale revivals in mass as the Confederates. At the start of the war, Christianity was not as important to most soldiers as it was by the end after the revivals. Encampments were filled with sin, the greatest being drinking, gambling, and swearing. Christians had to deal with being snickered or mocked at for praying. By the end of the war, however, this was no longer entirely the case, and even many of those who did the initial snickering were in turn converted to Christianity. Thus, peer pressure to sin turned to peer pressure to be faithful Christians. The history of the revivals is filled with an abundance of stories of conversion and acting out of their faith. General Yule, for instance, accidentally walked in on Stonewall Jackson praying and moved by the sincerity of his heartfelt message to God, said, if that is religion, I must have it. Later, during the Gettysburg campaign, a northern civilian came up to Yule and asked if they were allowed to attend their normal worship on the Sabbath. Yule said, of course, and that he would even join them. Even more embarrassed, the civilian asked if it was okay to pray for President Lincoln, and Yule replied, sure, and that Lincoln needs our prayers the most. When the soldiers left for war, the southern home front was praying for the army, but by the, toward the end of the war, it was the southern army who was praying for the home front. The Christian faith impacted the war in fighting it in a just manner. When Lee invaded Pennsylvania, for example, he issued General Orders 73 ordering his men to respect private property, reflecting that the duties exacted of us by civilization and Christianity are not less obligatory in the country of the enemy than in our own. There were, of course, killing, there was, of course, killing in the war, but there were hardly any outright murders or rape. One soldier refused to shoot at the enemy and stayed aiming his musket up in the air. Another soldier, on the other hand, prayed for the enemy while he shot at them. The angel at Maury's Heights at the Battle of Fredericksburg, Richard Kirkland, risked his life being shot at in order to give water to the enemy, and that is just one of the many examples of the occurrences of Christian charity during the war. Another such example, which is a little bit more famous, is General Gordon caring for General Barlow at Gettysburg, who after the war became good friends. Their faith also gave soldiers a sense of everlasting peace when facing near certain death in fighting in the closed order formations. The revivals included work by chaplains, missionaries, visiting ministers, cooperating officers, and the soldiers themselves. The large-scale revivals occurred in the winter months when there wasn't as much fighting. Many men were so eager to hear the gospel that there were even instances of men standing in snow without shoes, waiting for church, listening to sermons in the rain, and praying on the battlefield itself. There is a story of a group of Confederate soldiers praying during the Seven Days Battle who came under artillery fire, and they didn't want to disrespect God, but they didn't want to risk certain death either, so they compromised and they crawled toward cover while they continued to pray. The revivals included church services, singing of hymns, Christian associations such as the YMCA or the Young Man's Christian Association, reading the Bible and religious tracts, becoming church members, partaking in the Lord's Supper, baptisms, and prayer meetings. It was even said that they had prayer meetings for the upcoming prayer meetings. There was such a great demand for Bibles that they were even run through the blockade from overseas. They worshipped in local churches, tents, chapels that they built, and in the open air. When the war turned into trench warfare, they built subterranean dugouts to worship in, and they also built churches every 600 to 800 yards as part of their defenses. The war also impacted their faith in that the, because of the reality of death, many saw a certainty of everlasting life if they convert, converted and straightened out their life.
The essential message of the revival was focused upon individual salvation through faith in Christ, and rarely talked about politics or slavery. Most of those converted remained devout Christians even after the war, as faithful church members and others who even became church leaders.